hitting it hard or soft. So we're going to talk driver. Should you be hitting it hard or soft? Common question, isn't it, with golfers? Oh, I need to slow down. Oh, yeah, a bit quick, that one. Yes. Now, we got Steve Buzzer in the house. Buzz, man. Hi, guys. Lovely to have you back in the UK, Steve. Well, thank you. visit. Um, and you actually did a study on this, not only with us two taking part, but with a number of good golfers. I did. And you worked out... Now, I'm saying hard or soft. You actually phrased it more as must hit target, I think. Yeah, so I... The way I did my study is I gave you three, basically, three different holes. Yeah. The hole that's super tight. You either hit the fairway or you're dead. Yeah. And then I had your standard drive, and then I had... I described like trying to drive a par four, but your average drive's not clearing the bunkers at the front of the green. Cool. So there's your three scenarios. So what we're going to do, Matt, I want you to do the to kick us off and capture a bit of data. And we'll talk about the results that Steve found in his study, because it's really interesting. But just for argument's sake, we don't know how this will go, because obviously it's only a small data capture, so it could flip by the side. But the first few shots we're going to see Matt hit is that he must hit the fairway. It's that one where you've just got to hit the fairway. One he loves. Welcome to my channel. If this is the first time you've been here, you might want to consider subscribing down there. Hit thumbs up if you like this video as well. Come the end of it. If you're already a subscriber, hello again. Make sure you ring that bell icon, can you? Question, do you want to hit your driver further? If so, up there in that box, let me know. Hitting the ball further. Maybe it's simpler than we all think. Back to the video. He's going to go for his little cutty, fine target shot. We're going to hit a batch of these to kick us off. <laughs> he's heating up and he's not even sending them yet. So that's 10 of you trying to find fairway. I'm trying to find fairway. Gender, there he is, the fi fairway finder himself, Dan's in the house, joining us for this study of the leader. Um, so that's found fairway. So the next 10 shots. So we're saying your, your standard drive goes X. So what would you say your standard drive goes? Carry like 260, 270. 280-ish as well. Yeah. Can so let's say we, we've got a hole now, it's 290. Yeah. It has to go that far, but I don't care if it goes wide. So you've got permission to... That's why I've taken the jumper. <laughs> Ten more, we'll compare the stats and see what we can People will comment now, they'll say it was the jumper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He is impressive with speed, isn't he? They're going. 300 carries, yeah. Oh, jeez. Fast, big balls. 305, all that running. Yeah, it is. Powerful legs, you see. Yeah. Yes. Oh, speed, man. Right, that's 10 of 10. That's knackering. Now, Steve's just crunching the numbers. Um, do you have any concept before we look at them of what might be straighter or not from that batch of shots? Not obviously, don't take what you already um, know. I it, I felt like it was easier to f understand what was happening with my fairway finder, so I think I could hit one and go, oh, like that's, that's gone right. Yeah. Like I could only see sense that one went right on the. Lassoers, which so the, last, is the last one. The lassoers, you don't actually know what's coming out. No. Like, so emotionally, you would feel safer if it is slower, finding fairway and going slower, because you would feel like you know what might come out, or not. I, I, I mean, I know what's come out when I've hit it. Yeah, and that so, makes you feel comfortable, or you don't care. No, like if I was to compare the two and see the data, and saw my launch ball was a bit left, bit right, but I could manage it, then I would keep doing that, even though I couldn't when I hit it. Yeah, I get feel that. It. Okay, so my question then: if you aren't, you're just an average day golfer who isn't measuring like that. You know, your average day golfer goes, "I need to swing slower. I'm straighter. I go too fast." That comment's very common. Yeah, yeah. The way you're speaking to me there, if we take away your knowledge, we can detach you from what you know. I, it sounded to me like you... It's nicer knowing that even if uh, the result I, isn't I right, feel I like, don't know. I feel like if I wasn't able to see ball flights and stuff, I'd be able to change my controlled one quicker because I'd have feedback. So I'd be like, 
I've hit that there. Okay, I can move yeah. it. So the controlled shot, there. you would the feel right, like now you I can could... tweak it. Yeah. I would say that controlled, I'd be able to do it more without anything around me. What have you seen there, Steve Orn? So we've seen something very similar to what we saw last time. So when we were in the lab, yeah. don't swing it slow. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, so massive drop off. If you look at your carry, 287, 287 when you were trying to send it. Yeah. Which is impressive. That's good. That's, yeah, yeah. that's a great number, 243. Yeah. So you're losing 40-something 40 40 yards. yards. So, you, yards, so yeah. if you've lost 40 yards, you now have to hit it considerably straighter. Mm -hmm. So distance, like when you look at strokes gained, distance actually, like you look at the big guys, distance is what they want. Yeah, that actually, absolutely. that has a bigger effect on that strokes gained. <laughs> so if you're gonna give up distance, you have to now not just hit it a little straighter, you arrow. need to hit it yeah, You arrow. need to be yeah. like Mr. Arrow, yeah. yes. you? So what's the direction change that he must be so you're seven yards wider. What, in it's soft? Hitting yeah. it soft. Oh, wow, double lose. So. <laughs> yeah, crazy. I, yeah. I get why he's saying he felt more comfortable. I think that was coming from the strike. So the strike was better when you yeah. were going slower. Mm -hmm. So that loss of control, better player, if when you're losing the strike, it's not going to feel quite as nice. Yeah, yeah. it's nerve wracking. But. You can't afford to give up that much distance. No, 40 and, yards is way too much. And, <laughs> and this is what I've seen a lot. So when I, when I did the study, like the, we did the indoor one with you, yeah. like at, yeah. at, at Cardiff Met, we were in the lab. Everybody increased their ball speed. When I did it outside, only one person didn't increase their ball speed. There's more to it than ball speed. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it, yeah. it's not yeah. just saying, go out there and whack it. But for me, it's looking at how you're practicing. Yeah, you know, play. when you're doing this, just keep sending it. And we've played today, and it was pretty apparent, like when you were trying to keep it on play, like ease your way into the ramp. He was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He didn't ease his way I in that way. Whack it straight. But, yeah, from yeah. The but off, then you know, got to yeah. a point, yeah. and I, I don't. I, we haven't obviously played that much golf the last few years, but you used to go four iron. Yeah. It, for me, it's hit your four iron. And whack yeah. it out. Oh, whack it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and the more you whack it, yeah, you're gonna then take control of this strike. So I did this test as well, same time as Matt. Um, and I've seen this through all my life as coaching, where you get a student swinging at a particular speed, and they say they need to swing fast or slower. And I just think, oh, that's another thing that you need to think about. You've got like bigger fish to fry than yeah. thinking about that. Go at the speed that you're kind of, not comfortable at, but that you naturally go at. Some people are like instantly naturally fast, and then some people are naturally like patters. A bit like me, I'm kind of naturally a bit more of a patter. Um, when we did it with me, again, we saw a similar pattern where I didn't make any, I, I hit it further when I wanted to hit it further, I think you said, so but you, I wasn't straighter when I was trying to hit it straighter. Yeah, and your, like Lockie's difference between when he tries to hit it straight and his standard is it was quite big. Yeah. And he was one of the biggest, if not the biggest. Out. Yeah. So like the, what we've just shown here, I'm not expecting to see that in everyone. Yeah. You didn't have the drop off, but you didn't have the gain either. Yeah. So I, I think under the heat of battle, you're almost trying to add something and you're computing something that you don't really need. So again, I would be better off going at Full speed or yeah. a comfortable speed? Because yeah. I think you saw not much of a difference between comfortable and full yeah. when I went to try and hit only target. It was, there was no improvement, but I did lose distance, so what's the point? Yeah, exactly. And then when you're looking at the distance one, you were able to increase ball speed. Like, I didn't look at um, strike. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's not something that I was looking at in, yeah, yeah. in my study. Yeah. Um, what we've just seen here with Matt. It was interesting. Yeah. yeah. And like, we, we would happily buy a new driver for a couple mile an hour improvement in ball speed. Like, if you can put that in there. So, for your average golfer out there who wants to slow down, you know, you've heard it, like, I'm going to hit one here. So, I'm like a bit nervous, I'm going to hit a, like a nice soft driver here and just try and find target. I feel more comfortable. We're, you've not seen that that actually helps many people at all. So they do drop off distance, so that one's going like 230 yeah. yards, but they then turn their nose straighter. So we want golfers out there swinging a bit harder, basically. Though, so right? I, I want them so, swinging harder. Yeah. And what I saw in the study as well, so we're talking about like what the ball is doing here. Yeah. And um, we, we, we had this boy in his pants, yeah. <laughs> if you remember. Yeah. So we put, Everyone remembers we, that. So we put the 3D marker system yeah, yeah. on. 
not one of the players compromised their sequencing. Okay, so what so, do you mean so, by sequencing, as in when I'm swinging, I've got for arguments like hips turning, knees moving, feet moving, shoulders moving, hands moving, clubs moving, all at different speeds. Yeah. And certain sequences need to line up to give me some kind of delivery. Basic feeling as I can turn my shoulders or try and keep my hips back and that's going to change paths and deliveries. So what you're saying is that people's swings basically stayed intact. They stayed intact. And that's the one thing that you hear, isn't it? I need to go slower because I, I lose my swing. Yeah. What I would say though with the amateur that struggles with driver, they might have a sequencing issue. Yeah. So slowing down kind of, it doesn't make it better, it just hides the problem. Yeah, yeah. So you might go, well, I need to make a few technical adjustments to actually get what I actually need. I mean, how many of you in lessons have had this? I've had this so often. You ask someone to do something, and they're thinking a lot. You know, because you, sometimes you're asking someone to do three things on top of each yeah. other through a lesson, and you obviously never want it to end that way, but it's like, try this, okay, that's not working. Mm -hmm. Try this, that, that's not working. But they're still retaining a bit of everything where they do the swing that isn't the swing. Does that make sense? <laughs> so then, you know, they go, all right, so try this. And then they start going, oh, and, oh. So, and I'm like, you do a practice swing or you do a shot. That yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't want that mix. Yeah. Like, I want you going at speed, within reason, otherwise this is kind of pointless because it oh, was yeah. so, like, robotronic that no one's going to hit the ball yeah. like that. So Matt almost is like Robotronic trying to hit fairway, isn't he? Definitely, and what, what I like, so when I was doing the research, all we were doing is looking at it set in time, like three different holes. When I apply this to practice now, I, I call them fireballs. I like people to hit five balls, just trying to hit them out there as far as they can. I'm a strong believer if you do that every session, you'll start to learn how to harness it. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So for people practicing at home, people who want to get better, Obviously, anyone going further and keeping... So if you all keep the same level of accuracy that you've got now, let's say you've got some level of accuracy, you play golf and you finish, you don't lose a ball every shot you hit. If you can add 10 yards to that, which is what you're all buying when you look for these, trying to, in theory, you could be better. So for them practicing... So you want a batch of different than the kind of shots, is that what you're saying? No, just five, five balls. Yeah. And, and what, I, what I will do is I'll pull them away and put them to one side, yeah, yeah. you know, just so it's there. But um, where we used to be at Clifton Hill, mm. great example, there used to be a bank, at the back. probably still there. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's the bank. All I'm trying to do is hit it on the bank. Yeah. I don't care where on the bank. Yeah. And it gets rid of a, some of those technical thoughts, so that can help the person. So that's you going at like so crazy that's, that's me going at it. Yeah. And it, it feels a little uncomfortable. I, I think that's what Matt's point was, you know, because I'm exerting myself. Yep. It's a, it, it would be a bit like going in the gym and going, I don't really want to sweat, mm. but I want lots of muscle, so I'm going to pick a weight I know I can do. Yeah. And you go in there, and you, your confidence might get up, but you're not going to see any gains, because we have to overload our system. Yeah. And that's what I see these five fireballs doing. You overload yourself, and then over time, you actually adapt to it. Yeah. So it's a, I mean, it, the, the, the message never changes for me, really. It's good. I really like that, Steve. Thanks. It was interesting. You know, basically, it's the same idea of people going out there and just trying to get that perfect drive each time when they're practicing. Actually, really, what are you practicing? And the building in muscles analogy there is spot on. Like, you're just going out there and massaging your ego. That has its place. You want certain confidences going into um, rounds and things like that. But think about it. Matt possibly feels more comfortable going slow, but the data proves that he's not. So he can keep massaging an ego that doesn't help him, or he could try and get better. You know, why give 40 yards up? Like for Matt, it's a massive gain to have given away when we're talking about seven yards of accuracy difference. It, it's, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my students, I would always go, I want you to do X, Y, and Z, but I want you to do it at the, like, the best speed you can do it at. Mm -hmm. Like, show me top speeds. I want it going, I want it going further. Yeah. If, you know, they come off the rails and we need to slow it down and you see an improvement in movement, but I'm always trying to then get it back up. And I think amateurs are just so keen to try, they think softer is better, don't they, really? Yeah. Where your study is kind of showing that maybe that's not always the case. Yeah, I think there's some added distance there for you. Why give it away? Yeah. I mean, if Matt was seven yards or whatever it was more accurate hitting it, 40 yards short of that, it's like 
crazy, isn't it, like to give that away? Yeah. Push comments down below, are you someone who wants to hit the ball further? I'm sure you are. Is this something you have tried or not? The other good point, um, Steve made it in the car, just to make it here the end, it's really interesting, is that basically people are really scared. So they hit a few really hard and they like miss the planet a bit and then they instantly switch that off. Hitting it really hard, you saw Matt's um, strike start to deviate a bit more. So yeah, he might, early on hit a few wild ones, but if you do it enough, you do those five shots that Steve says each practice session, keep looking at the data in your head as you hit them. Look, you know, I do miss them a bit right when I do that, but look how much further they're going. There'll be situations you'll be able to bleed that information onto a course where there is that wider hole and you've practiced hitting it that bit harder. I always, I compare it to this one for me. I hit the ball quite well like that because I practiced it. Yeah. Because I, I did it as a kid. I'm in the ball, you're a bit bored in the air. Now, far can I hit it? Well, that's how I worked out of it further. And I've actually used it in competition play in situation. Get practicing those skills. Forget perfect. Start whacking it. Long balls, man. Long balls. They were long, man, first. Few, they were they? big balls, weren't they? <laughs>